Hello and welcome to another Beer and Code. My name is Justin. Thank you for joining me. You know I appreciate it. Today I'm going to be talking about C sharp generator functions. Um, and I'm also going to be talking about the beer that I'm drinking. Mm. This is called Black Tulip by New Belgium or New Holland Brewing in Holland, Michigan. Black Tulip. It is a special uh, high gravity, high gravity series beer, and it's like a, an American style or American Belgian style. It's got a lot of that classic uh, Belgium taste with a little bit of hop in the end. Um, I find it fantastic, and you should too. So, like I said, we're going to be talking about C sharp generators, and uh, generator functions are what a lot of the link to objects, link to SQL, uh, any framework stuff like that is built off of. Or it is a way to do deferred execution. And if you've ever used the yield return keyword, um, then you've used this generator function or this deferred execution. And it's, it's a way to put off executing code that you don't need until you need it. And it's kind of confusing at first uh, when I explain it like that, but it's it's a really simple, simple uh, thing, and I will explain it to you right now. For example, so say I have a function here that's going to give me all of the positive numbers, and then I'm going to loop through them and print them to the console. It's a pretty simple task. So let's do that in this function. All right, so we're going to have a list, a uh, list of ints. If I can type, and we're going to end up returning that list, and then we need to populate it. So let's do for var i equals zero, whoopsies, equal zero, i is less than int dot max, i plus plus, and now we're going to add. Now we're going to add that number i to our list. So nums.add i. All right, very simple. So we have uh, looping through all the positive numbers, adding them to the list, returning the list. So you can see here I've put a breakpoint, spoilers at the exception, and I'm going to give this a run. And you will see what happens. Uh oh. All right, let's print out the message and see what it says. Exception of type system out of memory exception was thrown. What does that mean? Well, obviously we had trouble sticking every single number from one to 2.147 trillion into memory. So we ran out of memory and it exploded. So apparently this solution will not work. Generates generators to the rescue. Uh, so now instead of this list here, we're going to turn this into a generator function. So to do that, I'm going to return the or remove those returns in that list. We're not actually going to build up a list. We're just going to build up a generator, and it is dastardly simple to do. Yield return i. Okay, so this is now officially a generator, and the main components of that are two things. First, the fact that it returns an i enumerable. That's important. Fact number one. Uh, all generators need to return an I enumerable of some type. And this yield return keyword. So yield return means return one item in my enumerable. So each time this gets called, one new item will be generated out of the generator. Uh, so now let me show you how that works when we actually use it. So I'm going to put some breakpoints about so you can kind of see what's happening. All right. So now I'm going to run it again. OK, so now, now right before I call this this function, uh, you'd expect it to hop into here and execute the function. But it doesn't. Um, so when you actually call the enumerator or, or this generator function, it doesn't actually do any execution yet. It doesn't run any code. It returns instantly. But now when I step over it, so now when I do this in, which says, give me another number. Then it hops into the generator down here, and it grabs the first item, 
which you will see it prints zero. All right, we're gonna hop over here again. We're still in this function, but now it's asking for another one. So we're gonna jump back into our generator. So it's uh, kind of a, a little confusing to follow when you're when you're tracing it that way. But now it's going to our generator is gonna return the next number, which is one. And now I'm asking for another one. Uh, we're hopping back in our generator, and it's going to return the next one. Two. So if I pull out all the stops and hit go, you can see it just zip on down and uh, print out all those numbers. So that's a pretty contrived and trivial example, but I hope you can kind of see um, how it works in the most basic sense. And now we'll hop into a place where you might actually want to use this. So hop into our data access example. So here, we're actually gonna be pulling data out of a local database on my computer. And this database, uh, this table called positive numbers has all the numbers from zero until about 13.1 uh, million, which is quite a bit. So I have this code here that gets them all in a similar fashion as uh, our previous example. So I create a list and then I execute a select command, select everything from the table called positive numbers, and then I execute the reader, and then I iterate through the reader while there are values, and I stick them into this list, and then I return the list. So once I'm out of this function, I just wrote a little timer function here, uh, but, but this number function will have all of the numbers from one or zero to 13 million, which is a lot. So let's see what happens when we try to run this. All right, let's go. Step over that. All right, we're done. 21 seconds though, or 22 seconds, is a very long time to wait before anything happens. Because it takes a very long time to pull 13 million items out of a database and stick them into a list like that. So now, we're going to solve this kind of performance problem with our uh, generator. So, like I said before, it's important that this returns an I enumerable of strings uh, like that. And we're not going to build up a list anymore because that takes forever. And instead of adding it to the list, we're just going to do as we did before and yield return. So now we are executing the command and still the same loop, but we're only grabbing each item when it's asked for. So we're only going to do it when it's asked for. So let's run it again and see what happens. All right, let's step over it. And boom, as you can see, it literally took, not literally, but almost literally, literally took no time at all to execute that query. So now we're already on our way to printing out numbers. And let's, as you can see now, when it asks for the next number to print, it hops in here now and gives it to us. And then we print it out. And now we're gonna ask for another one and it's gonna hop back in the function. So as you can see, this is actually useful um, because, let me put up, pull out the full stops here, um, because it's really fast now, because it's just doing one at a time and printing the console. You skip that uh, that initial lag time and it is uh, it solves your performance bottleneck. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about how to make some generators and why they would be useful. Thank you for tuning in. Um, stick around after a little bit, and I'm going to read you something interesting I found out. I read about the beer online. But uh, thank you for sticking around and tuning in this far. I really do appreciate it. Um, please, 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 if you enjoyed this and want to see more, uh, like and subscribe and let me know what you liked and let me know what you didn't like. Um, I really like hearing from you guys. I try to respond to all the comments. Um, so yes, so thank you so much for joining me and, uh, 
No, I appreciate it. Cheers. Mm. So good. All right, so what I found on the internet uh, about when I was looking up this beer to, to see what it said um, was a really cool description. It says, Since the early 1600s, the Dutch have attempted to breed a pure black tulip. Many have tried and few have come close, but none have succeeded. Call it the holy grail of the tulip world. In honor of this elusive flower, we have brewed this special elixir. We have combined the finest Belgian malt, rare European hops, and authentic Belgian yeast. And finally, the brew is dusted with tulip petals. The resulting blend is nothing less than magical. Ah, I really like that. Thanks again for tuning in. And uh, cheers once again. It is really good.